The U.S. intelligence community concentrated on looking for indications of nuclear weapon development and testing, but they uncovered much more than they expected. What did they uncover? Let's find out. The United States launched its first surveillance satellite, the Corona, at the height of the Cold War, when nuclear apprehension was at an all-time high, assigned to take pictures of the Soviet Union's interior. These early satellites carried rolls of film when they were launched. As there was no way to electronically transfer the data they contained to Earth, the films had to be recovered and developed on our planet. Once the film was used, the satellite would eject a re-entry vehicle back to Earth, containing the priceless undeveloped photos, where they were discovered as they drifted down by a passing jet. As the story of one such mission progressed, a mysterious item appeared in the Caspian Sea. It was a massive airplane, almost 100 meters long with wingspans that were far too short to fly like a typical aircraft. Nothing like it had ever been observed by U.S. intelligence. As they obtained more images, it became evident that the craft was outpacing even the biggest current American military aircraft, such as the Lockheed C-5M. Despite traveling at the same speed as a conventional aircraft, even the Soviet Navy flag, not the Soviet Air Force, was embroidered on it. This finding raised red flags within U.S. intelligence. Had the Soviets made a propulsion advancement that would give them an advantage in naval combat? The U.S. misidentified the object as the Caspian Sea Monster because they were perplexed by what they saw, but the Soviets weren't working on a massive hydrofoil or seaplane. This enormous vehicle being created in secrecy was actually an Ekrana plan, a massive ship with the ability to skim across the ocean's surface at great speeds. The Central Hydrofoil Design Bureau tasked lead designer Rostislav Alexiev with starting work on a prototype aircraft in 1962. The Rakita was one of the hydrofoil planes that Alexiev first developed. These objects easily fit the definition of a boat. However, the Soviets intended to go a step further. They employed a hydrofoil, which is effectively a wing engineered to work in water, to raise the boat's hull out of the water as it gained speed allowing it to cut drag and improve top speeds. The Ekrana plan would employ a phenomenon known as the ground effect to fly extremely close to the ocean's surface. When a fixed-wing aircraft travels at a lower height than the width of its wings, the ground effect occurs. The build of the wing deflects the air downward as the massive quantities of the air come into contact with the aircraft, compressing the air between the wing and the ground. This trapped air may result in an area beneath the wing with a greater than normal pressure, which will increase lift. All pilots must learn to deal with this because it occurs with all aircraft during takeoff and landing. For instance, certain planes that are overloaded can take off but can't climb above the level where the ground effect is at work. Ekrana plans are made to maximize this impact and never venture outside of the ground effect zone. The Ekrana plan can be heavier without requiring additional power just as our plane can take off when overloaded. This would make an airplane an effective weapon in open water fighting. Due to radar shadow caused by the Earth's curvature, it would fly beneath enemy radar for a considerably longer period. On October 16, 1966, the TM made its first test flight with chief designer Alex Eagle Board. It was against the law for Soviet aircraft designers at the time to ride in such test vehicles in case they were in an accident. However, Test pilot Vladimir Lajanov pushed for Alexiev to fly so that he could test and improve his designs. The initial tests successfully demonstrated that the TM could fly at 430 km h for maximum fuel efficiency and 500 km h for maximum operational speed. During some high-speed tests, it is said to have reached a top speed of 650 km h the TAM served as an important proof of concept and set the stage for all subsequent Ekrana plans. Using the lessons he had learned, Alexiev set out to create the Orleama, a new transport vehicle made exclusively for transporting troops and military hardware. It had a wingspan of 31.5 meters, a length of 58 meters, and a maximum takeoff weight of 140 metric tons. A gigantic NK-12 turboprop engine was installed on the tail as far away from the saline water as possible, and its engine configuration was fascinating. The most rugged turboprop engine to ever enter service, this enormous counter-rotating, 6 meters in diameter turbopropellers produced 11 kilowatts of power. Additionally, it had two nose-mounted turbofan engines with top-mounted air intakes to reduce water intake. 
These engine's exhaust was directed under the wings to increase the ground effect by inflating the air cushion with the jet engine's high pressure output. These engines were only required during takeoff for the plane to accelerate quickly enough to generate sufficient lift through the wing and ground effect. Once this was accomplished, they were turned off to save gasoline. The Orlinoc had wheels and a cargo door installed on the nose, so it could drive onto the ground and unload. Although only four were manufactured, this Ekranoplan was completely operational and entered and remained in service until 1993. The specifics here differ and I had trouble finding reliable sources of information on what happened to Alexiev once the Orlinox development was finished. While several sources claimed he crashed in the TM, Orlinox, or Volga 2, a small passenger transport at Kranoplan, all indications seem to point to Alexiev losing his job as a chief designer and passing away soon after. I would have no idea if they were brought on by natural or crash-related injuries. The development of the Krana plans in the Soviet Union slowly started to fizzle out with Alexiev gone and the Soviet Union on the verge of disintegrating. They succeeded in creating a slightly scaled-down version of the TM that can fire anti-ship missiles from a boat at sea. The initial iteration of this vehicle, known as LUN, was created in 1987. This car's length was 74 meters and its wingspan was 44 meters. Its weight was 286 tons. The engines on the tail were totally removed. Instead, it was propelled by eight NK87 turbofans positioned at the front of the craft. Each flaunted a thrust capacity of 127 kilonewtons. In 1987, the Lund joined the Soviet Navy. Only one model, now on display in a dry dock on the Caspian Sea coasts, was finished before the Soviet Union fell apart in 1991. Although the concept of a wing on a ground effect plane has validity, no military has ever embraced it. German engineers created the X114, a much smaller Ekranoplan, in the 1970s, but it was never put into use. The XTW4 Ekranoplan, developed in 1999 and put through numerous testing a year later, was another experiment used by the Chinese. Google Maps once showed the car near a Chinese maritime port but it has disappeared. While Boeing unveiled plans for the Pelican, its largest ever at Kranoplan, in 2002. According to their claims, the vessel would be longer than a football field and capable of transporting 17 M1 Abram tanks across the ocean. But in 2005, the US Congress rejected the proposals. Simply put, there was no demand for such a plane. Wing and ground effect planes might yet find a market, but for the time being, reliability and safety issues are their main obstacle. There is little time for corrective adjustments when flying at such a low altitude, and any Ekrana plan is rendered useless in bad weather with strong winds or waves. Some have attempted to create more compact passenger versions like the A050. According to the Russian embassy in South Africa, this go-to source for Russian news will be operational within the next three years. These temperamental vehicles may find a useful niche in our chiplagic areas like Southeast Asia, where rising wealth and population, in combination with the proximity of islands to one another, may create a market. However, regular airplanes will always be a considerably more effective and dependable mode of transportation over long distances since flying in the upper atmosphere's lower density air significantly reduces drag. These passenger versions would therefore need to fly very small distances as airliners waste time during ascension and rising and climbing. For the correct application, this technology is completely practical, and someone may find a solution and use it to launch a profitable company. You could be that, but you'll need to first develop problem-solving skills. Starting with Brilliant's daily challenges is an excellent idea. Brilliant challenges you with intriguing scientific and mathematical puzzles every day to put your mind to the test. You are given the background and structure for each daily assignment, so that you can complete it successfully and learn the subjects by doing. A course quiz that delves deeper into the same idea is available if you enjoy the problem and want to learn more. There is a community of thousands of students discussing the issues and providing answers if you are lost and need further help. You will progress from curiosity to mastery by tackling thought-provoking daily tasks one day at a time. That's it, guys. If this video was insightful for you, then go on and like this video. Please kindly subscribe to our channel and click on the bell button for more of our updates.